Good afternoon. This is Harry uh, Shipley with the Iowa State Bar Association. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for joining today. And uh, in the interest of time, I think we'll get started here shortly. I thought I'd give you a brief uh, understanding as how the Iowa State Bar Association arrived at uh, choosing Trustify to partner with for a member benefit to the membership. And uh, then we'll hand it over to uh, Zach Schwartz and he'll give you a demonstration on uh, how to sign up for the service, how the service works and the benefits that the service provides. Uh, so a little history about the program itself and how we arrived here. Uh, back in 2016, we had done a survey of the membership and uh, as a result of that uh, survey, um, members indicated that one of the number one priorities or concerns that they had was technology uh, the, the changing technology, implementing technology into their practice. Uh, and, and because of those concerns raised, we decided to go out into the market and see what, as an association, we might be able to provide to ease those concerns. And one of those concerns uh, brought us to email encryption. Uh, so over the last uh, approximately 15 months, we reviewed a, a, our, our staff, as well as the law practice management section of the Bar Association, reviewed a, a significant number of email encryption providers. Uh, we found uh, Trustify to be uh, two things, a superior product, but also a product that was easy to use both for the sender and the recipient of emails. And after uh, testing uh, for, for many months, uh, talking with other users, uh, testing a variety of different products, uh, we arrived at a structure and a deal with uh, Trustify. And uh, as, as you know from the marketing that we've provided you, we provide Trustify uh, for each email account that a member may choose for $25 a year, which is approximately not a 10% discount, but a 10% of what the market value of the product is. Obviously, we use our economies of scale and we are helping underwrite some of the program itself. Uh, to, for the betterment of our membership. So with that gives, gives you a, a quick understanding as to where we are and, and how we arrived here. And I'd like to hand it over at this time to Zach Schwartz so that Zach can give you a presentation on how the service works. Hi, Harry, thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, great job. Uh, so just wanna start off introducing myself. Uh, this is Zach Schwartz, I'm the Vice President of Strategic Alliances here at Trustify. Uh, with really my main focus on the legal vertical and different bar associations across the country. Uh, so one of the things that we've been working on with various bar associations, uh, primarily with Iowa, they were one of the first to join on with Trustify, is really helping the legal community uh, find that appropriate way to digitally communicate with their clients. Uh, from going to the American Bar Association conferences that we attend, uh, seeing that that has been a real push for them. So with the ever increasing cases of theft of client information via email, whether that be from phishing attacks or man in the middle attacks, but from stealing emails, uh, firms are starting to focus and see that the way emails are sent in the past uh, is becoming uh, a liability for different firms and they're potentially opening themselves up for fines and liabilities. Uh, so with that being said, what we're gonna do today is go through first the process of how to sign up for a Trustify account through the Iowa Bar, uh, and then go through the process of what it looks like for a day in the life of a Trustify user. So how we send emails, what it looks like from your clients when they receive emails, uh, so what it looks like sending them back and forth, and then also some of the other services that we have that come along with every license. So how to protect the inbox around potential spear phishing attacks or incoming spam that may have malicious activity or malicious content in it. So what we're gonna do right now is go into our Iowa Bar Association member benefit page. So this is probably a page that is familiar to all of us. Uh, this is the home page within the Iowa Bar Association. From here, what we're gonna do to purchase a Trustify license is go to the store. When we go to the store, we'll scroll down to our member services page. And then once on the member services pages, we see Trustify, we can see what Harry mentioned before. Uh, we have this at 90% off market value. So by being an Iowa Bar member, uh, you do receive significant benefits off of a Trustify license. 
So when we click on that, it's going to ask for our information. Uh, so we can first pick on how many licenses we need, whether that be uh, one through nine, uh, we'll do it here. Uh, same way if we're doing it for anywhere from 10 and above, we'll still purchase them through Trustify here. We'll type in the email addresses that we wish here and add the item. In the event that we are applying 10 or more, what's going to happen is we'll send an email either to support at trustifycorp.com or zschwartz at trustifycorp.com. That'll be given at the end of the uh, presentation. But with those implementations, those will be uh, structured through our support team and we'll assist in getting those licenses onboarded. Once we get to this page, we'll simply go to checkout apply our information here and then proceed to confirmation once we do that i already have an account so i'm not going to go through that entire process uh, but once that happens we're going to receive two emails the first email that we receive is going to be a confirmation that's going to look like this from the iowa state bar association so just confirming the product that we purchased and then we're going to receive a secondary email from Trustify, which is going to have this link in it right here. So iowabar.trustify.com slash sign up. So from here, this is where we're going to sign up for our Trustify account. Uh, on this page, what we need to supply is our first name, last name, a phone number, an email address, and then a password. From there, we'll then decide if this is an individual account, so if we're signing up a single user, or if it's a business account where we're gonna have multiple accounts with a single admin, and then sub-admin accounts or sub-users underneath that admin account. We'll do that all right here. Once we have our account made, the next thing that we'll do to log into Trustify is simply go to trustify.com. At trustify.com, if you see in the upper right-hand side of the screen, we have our client login. So we'll click on that to log into our account. Here, we're going to use the same email address and password that we signed up for on this page right here. So I'll type in my credentials. And then this will log us into the back end of Trustify. So on this page, this is the home page of Trustify's web application. So from here, we can receive some analytics on our account. So if we look on the right-hand side of the screen, first we can see how many emails we're sending out from our account. So that's on a daily, weekly, monthly level. Uh, that's basically a snapshot of what we're sending out through Trustify. On the left-hand side, we see some of our different add-ins that we have with Trustify. So right now, uh, we can see this is our Outlook add-in. Uh, we have a Gmail add-in as well, uh, as well as Office 365. We're also integrated with Dropbox, as well as Clio. Uh, so you can you can maneuver all those different applications or integrations directly from the Trustify application right here. If we scroll down, we have some more analytics on the account. So we can see recent emails that have sent been sent. Uh, if they, our account is, has any notifications, it would be mentioned right here. So if our account's coming up for a renewal, uh, or if we had a limited amount of emails left to be sent, they would be shown here. On the upper right hand side of the screen is our support tab. So when dealing with Trustify, as I mentioned before, we can either use it within Outlook, uh, within Gmail, within Office 365, or sending emails directly from the web application here. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, propose a couple questions in the chat. So one of those is going to be, what are you currently on today, whether that be Outlook, Gmail, uh, or Office 365 or other? And then another question that we have is, are you guys currently using any sort of email encryption today? So those will be coming up in the presentation later. I uh, will present those results at the end of the presentation. So uh, first thing we're going to do is go through how to send an email directly within the Trustify web application. So if we see this icon right here on the left-hand side of the screen, this is how we send a new Trustify email. So what we're going to do is send this just like we would any normal email. It's coming from our email address that we already have registered with Trustify. 
And then what we'll do is first type in an email address that we wish to send this email to. So this is gonna be one of my test accounts. And what we see here, this green icon that came up, what this is doing is we're pinging the recipient's domain to make sure that they have transport layer security enabled. Uh, and what this is is just an extra layer of protection on the encryption of this email. It's not something that's mandatory, but it is something that we do ping to see if TLS is enabled or not. Uh, in the event that it was not set up properly or incorrectly, it would either show as orange or as red. In the event that those do show in that color, what we recommend is that we two-factor authenticate those emails to make sure that there is no man-in-the-middle attack for sending out this email. And I'll show you what that looks like in one moment. So as we go forward, what we'll do is just send out a test subject line. And then we'll move down to our different options that we have with Trustify. Uh, if we want, we can add an, an encrypted attachment here. This will be picked up directly from either our hard drive, uh, if we have our integration set up with Dropbox, as well as if we, if we have our integration set up with Clio, uh, we can pull documents directly from those cloud storage services uh, directly into our Trustify account. When talking about encryption of an email, here are options below. So the first option that we have is encrypt message content. So what's gonna happen with this is we're gonna send this message encrypted. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna leave your email server it's going to travel via TLS to the Trustify encrypted email server, where then it'll apply Trustify's 256 AES military grade encryption. From there, it's gonna travel across the public internet, uh, fully encrypted until it reaches our recipient's mailbox. One issue with this is if there is a man in the middle attack or if that recipient's inbox is compromised, uh, the user will be able to open up that email if they have access to the recipient's inbox. What we do uh, to combat that is require multi-factor authentication, which we can see here. So multi-factor authentication can be done in a few different ways. So what I'm gonna do is open up my advanced settings and we'll go through what those different options are. So the first option that we have is phone. So what's gonna happen if we select phone for multi-factor authentication is the recipient will receive a, cell, uh, a text on their cell phone that they have received an encrypted email. And then in that text message, it'll give them a pin code about how to open up that message. Uh, Trustify, we sync with Active Directory as well as within the application, we can add phone numbers. Uh, so if you have the recipient's phone number or a database of phone numbers that you wish to add, uh, we can do that from the system. In the event that we're sending an email to someone that we might not know their cell phone number, uh, what we can use is a password. So for password, there's no limitation on our password or our hint. So for here, we can say something like we had there. I had last four of account number. For this, we'll have something simple like last name. So I'll put my last name here. Apologize for that. And then we will send out that email. The third option that we have is email. So for email, what's gonna happen is the recipient will receive that encrypted email, and then they'll be forced to authenticate that email, and then they'll receive a follow-up email with the passcode to the encrypted content. Uh, this does still opens itself up for a man-in-the-middle attack because the user could, or the, uh, the hacker could still have access to both that encrypted content as well as the password. Uh, so what we do here, um, if we don't have a way to come up with a password that both us and the recipient know, uh, or we don't have their cell phone number, we do use this method because it does comply with some of the HIPAA and PCI guidelines that Trustify adheres to. So it is a workaround for that, but it's not something that we necessarily recommend. If we continue down our advanced feature settings, we can see some of the other things that we can do within Trustify. So the next option that we have is expire in. If we wanna send an email with sensitive content that's gonna expire after a single view, a single day, a single week, we can set that here. Most of my emails I have so they never expire, uh, but if you do have that use case where you want something to be read once uh, and then disintegrate after that, we can set that within Trustify. Other options that we have, we can enable or disable printing with the email. 
uh, we can require authentication on replies. So we'll get into that a little bit later. But with every Trustify email that we send, whether or not the recipient has Trustify services on their own machine, uh, they'll still have the ability to reply in an encrypted fashion. So this is where you said if you want that reply message to require yourself to uh, authenticate before you open it. The next option, similar to our expire message, if we want that email only to be able to be opened once. Uh, and then we just have some other general things about uh, how to CC people, uh, different reply emails that we can have, tracking links, not tracking links, uh, and then if we want notifications when our emails were read. So with all that being said, what we're gonna do next is send an email after we go over one more feature, which is the Trustify postmark. So with every single email that Trustify sends, we're gonna have all types of analytics on that email. So we can see, well, we'll know when that email was sent, but we'll be able to see when it was delivered, when it was opened, uh, if it was forwarded, printed, if links were clicked on. And then the postmark is a timestamp of when all those actions happen. Uh, so we can see that yes, in fact, our email was open and we create a digital fingerprint and cre create documentation around that. We'll show that all in one second. So uh, now what we're gonna do is send out this email and see what it looks like from a recipient side. So we will send that out. And we'll give that one second to hit our inbox. Uh, and now we see that that message has come in. When we see that, we see Iowa test, that was the subject line we had. Content is encrypted until authentication is done. So let's click on that. We see content is encrypted until authentication is done again. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is click on authenticate and decrypt to open this message. One thing that we can do on this page is give you custom branding. So if you wanna have a look and feel to make it look like your own firm, uh, to reduce any trouble tickets of potentially people receiving this and thinking that it's not necessarily you. Uh, we do our best to combat that by giving it it's your own look and feel. So let's click on that and see what it looks like from a recipient side. So right now we have, we see authenticate your email. So this is the the application that I mentioned before where it's asking us to authenticate our email before we can view it but this isn't gonna necessarily protect us against a man in the middle attack. So what we can do in real time is go back to our Trustify application, go to email sent. So this is a full, this is all the emails we've sent from our account. This is the Iowa test one. Go back to our advanced settings and say, you know what? We wanna protect against a man in the middle attack for this. So we're gonna change this in real time to password, to last name. We'll simply click update changes. And then we'll go back to our Gmail account where we're gonna click on authenticate and decrypt to open message. So when we click on that, as we see, this has now been changed in real time. The hint is down below. The hint is my last name, which I know to be Schwartz. I'll enter that. And now the message will automatically decrypt and I can now view that content. Also, if I wanted to back in that app right here, um, what I could do would be to update changes. So if I wanted to do it, I can change the wording in that message. So hypothetically, if I sent uh, a case file to the wrong person uh, or the wrong case file to them, what I could do was change that on the fly before they opened it and they would never know. Uh, unlike with say Microsoft Office where you would recall a message, they would still have access to the original message. With Trustify, they would not have that access. If we scroll down, we see we can also reply to the message here. So if we click on reply, uh, we can answer back. So this could be something where we're talking with our own clients, requesting some sort of documentation from them. So whether that be uh, bank statements, social security, credit card information, anything like that, that has sensitive content in it, where they might not necessarily have their own encryption technology, but they need a way to send you secure documents. So what they can do here is simply scroll here, add any attachments from their own hard drive, and then send them back. Uh, that would open up my hard drive. I could attach it here and then simply send it. And that'll go directly back to my inbox. 
So uh, as Harry mentioned, one of the things that Trustify prides itself on is the ease of use from both the sender and the recipient. Uh, that's how we, you saw the ease of use from the recipient side. Uh, if you're using, say, a mobile device, that's when you would use that Trustify web application. But now what we're gonna do is go into our uh, Microsoft Outlook as well as Gmail, because uh, I believe most of us on this call are on one of those two email systems. Uh, and see what it looks like from that standpoint. So what we'll do first is go into Microsoft Outlook and go to the Get Add-ins page. So this is my standard Microsoft Outlook. Uh, and what I would do here to get Trustify is simply go to the Get Add-ins, which I just clicked on right here, go to the search bar, click on Trustify, and then if we see right here, we have the Trustify application. I already have it added to my account, but if I had not, it would say uh, add right here. It takes about two seconds to download. And then what's gonna happen is the Trustify application will be on your upper left-hand side of the screen. And now I have the ability to send encrypted emails the same way I did from my web application directly from Microsoft Outlook. So if you recognize these three settings from the web application, encrypt message content, require authentication, and postmark, these are all shown here. Same with our advanced settings. We can change our password, use SMS, or use email directly from the interface here. For this, we'll use the same thing, password. Uh, for this one, we'll change it to one, two, three, four. We can see that here. So to send out a Trustify email from Microsoft Outlook, all we'll simply do is open up a new message as we did here, type in the recipient's email address that we wish to send it to, click on which options we want. So this one we're gonna require authentication, we'll require our two-factor authentication as well as our postmark, click apply, and then if you see here, it's been added to the subject line, so we know that that uh, encryption has been applied. And then we'll type in our subject line like we did before. And simply click send. Next, what we're gonna do is go to our sent mailbox. So for this one, what I wanna show you is for this, what we're gonna pretend is, you know what? Uh, we sent the wrong information to this user and what we need to do is recall this message. So all we'll simply do is go to send items, go to our tracking and click on recall message. So if we see here, this is the message that we sent, Iowa test two, this one will change to Iowa test one, two, three, four and update that and in real time, that'll be updated on the recipient side. Also, we can see here in our tracking metrics that this email, what time this email was sent, what time it was delivered, and then what time that postmark was applied. If we expand it, we can even see the uh, IP address information that's been associated with this. So now let's go to back to our Gmail account. We see that second email has come in. We're gonna open this up. Click on authenticate to decrypt and open. It's gonna bring us back to that secure site. And here we see that new password, which is last four of account number. So I know the last four of my account number is one, two, three, four. We'll click on decrypt message. And now we can see that that message has also been updated in real time. So before when it said Iowa test two, it's now been updated to Iowa test one, two, three, four. And as a recipient, I have no idea that the first message ever said Iowa test two. Again, as we showed before, we also have the ability to reply back, so we can do that in the same fashion. This one, we have no, uh, no attachment, so this one will simply click send without adding an attachment, and that'll go directly back to our inbox. The next option that we have is through uh, Gmail. So the way we send out a email through Gmail is very similar, so with this, we're going to download the Trustify application as well. So to download the application, what we do is go to, I apologize, I have all these tabs open. One of these is my client login. Uh, so what we're gonna do is go to our support page. On our support page, we see our FAQ. So if you have any questions, uh, those are frequently asked questions, they can be seen there. Our Outlook ad, and we can get instructions on that. But as I showed, it's pretty simple. It's just go to the Outlook store. 
And then here we have the Chrome Gmail extension. So when we open up this, it's gonna open the Trustify extension uh, instructions. And what we're gonna do, we can read through the entire content, but the main thing that we want to go to is this link right here. So adding the Trustify extension. When we click on this, it's gonna open up the Chrome store. It'll open up the Chrome uh, web store. And I already have it added to my account, but had I not, it would say add to Chrome. We would add it here and then it would add directly to our Chrome uh, interface. So going back, once we have this downloaded, what we're gonna see is the Trustify shield in the upper right-hand side of the screen here, as well as right here. So when we click on that we want to compose a new message, what we're going to do is open this up. And from here, the problem is it's, uh, I have multiple accounts open, so this is on a different account, but it's going to show that same exact tab that we showed on Microsoft Outlook. So I'd have to log out but and log back in, but it's going to have those same different features of require authentication, uh, encrypt email content as well as postmark, and then it would also have the same advanced settings down below. One of the next things that I want to show is we've already shown how to send and receive encrypted mail. Uh, so now what we want to focus on is how do we protect ourselves around potential inbound threats. So when hackers might be sending us something like a phishing attack, a spear phishing attack, spam, trying to get users to click on malicious data uh, or malicious links in order to gain access to our system. So what we're gonna do now is go to my inbox and we're gonna open up the Trustify application one more time. When we open that on inbound mail, it's gonna look a little bit different. So here we see that this is a suspicious email. This is supposed to be from PayPal service. But when I open up the Trustify analysis on this, what we're doing is we're going through a few tests. So we're checking first off the TLS so we can see how many nodes or how many servers this email passed through before it got to us. We can see here that that's four, which is not something that's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but what is concerning is the DKIM, the SPF, the DMARC, and the return path are all off. So while they say that this is from a PayPal, uh, this is actually has malicious content in the body of the email. And if we were to click on this links, potentially there could be a virus associated with this content. If we go to another email, I have something from what was supposed to be my CEO asking for me to send him copies of my W2 information. If we look on the right hand side, again, it passed through four nodes, which is not a problem, but it, again, it did not pass any of our tests, and we have the analysis that this, in fact, was a spoofing attack. This was not actually from my CEO, and if I responded with my W-2s, it was someone trying to steal that information. Uh, what I mentioned to everyone who we work with is what Trustify is, is an authentication tool. It's not a replacement for any of your spam filters or spam blockers today, so this is not gonna stop any attacks from getting into your inbox. What it is gonna do is give you a notification system. So in those instances that you do get those emails asking for this one, for example, for a wire, this one for my W2s, another one for me to click on links, we recommend that you send it through our system to ensure that in fact it is a real email address. Uh, if I go to my real inbox, I can open this up and I can see that these are authenticated emails uh, and that these are to be trusted. So. Uh, something that we recommend for every single email that we, uh, there's any action items on those emails. Uh, so that pretty much concludes the demo of Trustify. Uh, I know we went over a, a lot within the service. Uh, there is going to be additional trainings and training videos posted on both the Iowa site as well as the Trustify site. So along with those FAQs, uh, there'll also be training videos. So from there, I guess what we'll do is we'll open it up to any questions that you might have. Uh, and we can also open it up to the poll questions that we had. Uh, so, Aaron, do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, yeah, there was a question from uh, Thomas. Is there a way to use Gmail with a different browser, such as Firefox? Uh, there 
is Trustify works best with um, with Chrome. So the way that we would work with that, it's additional level of implementation and you are gonna run into some bugs with it. Uh, so we recommend not, but it, it is doable. Someone else asked, if someone uses a Google domain for their email, but uses Outlook, G Suite software to integrate Google to Microsoft Outlook. Do you recommend using the Google add-in, the Outlook add-in, or both? Uh, it's really gonna work for both. So it's whatever you're most comfortable, what you're doing your day-to-day -day email correspondence in. Uh, the point of Trustify is to try to change as little amount of your daily email uh, process as possible. So we try to say that it's one to two clicks in order to encrypt or decrypt an email. So as long as you're on Microsoft Outlook or Office 365 2013 or greater uh, and have access to the, um, uh, the add-in store, it's no problem. So you can add it to both. There's no additional cost uh, as long as it's the same email address. Uh, so it's really whatever your preference is. Okay. Scott also asked, does the Outlook add-in also work with standalone Outlook as opposed to Office 365? So it does the only issue with that is it has to be 2013 or greater so the main thing there is you need access to the microsoft app store so as long as you have access to the microsoft app store which uh started in 2013 and greater uh you'll have no problem downloading it to a microsoft outlook uh non-office 365 client another question where are the messages message folders etc located Sure. So if we're still looking at my screen right now, uh, within the My Email section, we cover this very briefly, but there's a full audit history of every single email that was sent from our Trustify account, as well as every email that was replied back to in that secure portal that we showed before. Uh, so there's a full audit history here, as well as within our reporting tools. If we go to our reports, we can show a full history. We can pick on what the what dates we want to search from, but we can have a full audit history of the metadata here. So what I mean by metadata is we won't be able to see what the actual content was, but we'll be able to scrub through those emails to see uh, subject line, if there were attachments, if it was what the sensitivity score was. So if we detected certain sorts of sensitive content, whether that be credit cards, social security, uh, case file numbers, things of that nature, uh, that would be shown in this report here. So actually, you know what, we'll run a quick report and show you what that looks like. So here, basically, we're getting true false reading. So we can see who sent the information, who they sent it to, were there attachments, uh, was it a sense, were there's a sensitivity score associated with that? So we detect one through five. Was two-factor authentication used? Was uh, encrypt content used? Was our postmark used? And then uh, this can actually be expanded depending on the types of information that you are looking for. Uh, but there is full audit history on every email sent with Trustify. Zach, this is Harry. Would you follow up on that and show them that those emails also reside in the sent folder of their Outlook or their Gmail? Sure. Uh, so if we go to our sent file, so everything that's going to be sent out from Trustify using the application, so these were the two sample ones that I sent, that's still going to show here. Uh, but it's also going to be shown in this report right here. So we have multiple, so reporting, the Trustify uh, My Emails tab, as well as your sent folder. So you'll have full access in, in all three places. Harry, does that does that answer yes, the question? Yes, that, that's, I just wanted them to understand that, that it's, it resides in both locations. All right. Great. Okay, Zach, we do have some more questions as well. Sure. Um, just what I asked, they are wondering whether to use a business account or individual account. They have four or five email addresses within the office, and they have their own server. Sure. Uh, so for that, what we're going to do is we're going to select business account, and then in the sign-up page... Uh, so when we were signing up, let's go back one page, two pages. This is where we're going to, uh, we're going to sign up for how many accounts do we want. So here we would select five accounts. And then the first account that we write here, this is what's going to be our admin account. So the admin will have, be able to allocate resources to their sub admins and they'll be able to run reports. 
so whoever is gonna be managing the account will put their email address first and then create, then list the, uh, the secondary email addresses below. In the event that you do have 10 or more, you do it the same way, but you also follow that up with an email to support at trustify.com in order to help set that up. Okay, and uh, finally, how do you customize the Authenticate button? So the Authenticate button can't really be adjusted. What we can do is change the, if we go to the Settings tab, uh, so sorry, I went through that a little quick. We'll go back to the home page. But if we click on our name in the upper right hand corner, click on settings, then what we do is go down to look and feel. What we can do is upload our own logo. Um, so unfortunately, I'm not the admin for this account, so this is grayed out for me. The admin would have to do it. Uh, but you can upload your own logo, change the colors right here. Uh, if you want to change the headers or the footers of that email, uh, you can change that all within this panel right here to make it look like it's coming from you. Uh, what we also recommend uh, when dealing with clients for the first time sending out encrypted email, uh, we do receive within the first couple of days some trouble tickets coming in ensuring that is this really coming from you, uh, but just sending an email to say we've adopted a new encryption technology and you should be expecting to receive encrypted emails from us in the future. Hey Zach, that's the last question. Uh, Zach, this is Harry once again. W one other thing I'd just like you to touch base on is in case we have some of those uh, individuals with a firm and they, they want to see what extra uh, that their administrator might have control of, can you just kind of outline how you can set some parameters as the administrator as to when it automatically requires the email encryption? Uh, for instance, uh, finding a, a number structured like a social security number? Sure, absolutely. So what we covered today was the Trustify add-in. There's another component of Trustify. Um, it is for some of our larger organizations, so the minimum requirement is 25 users or more. Uh, but what that includes is automatic encryption. So it's already set up on our account. So basically what happens when sending out a new email, there's no need for the Trustify add-in. So what I can do is simply type in uh, my email, and say something like, this is not a real credit card number, guys, so don't worry. Uh, and we'll send that out. So what our system is doing is we have uh, basically thousands of data points that we're searching for. So whether that be credit card numbers, social security numbers, health information, case files, uh, these dictionaries can also be uh, adjusted so if there's specific terminology that applies to your business that might not apply to someone else's business uh, those can be updated so what we do here is when we send this out we'll see what that looks like in one second uh, but if we go to our admin panel the way that this is getting uh, either encrypted or not encrypted is via these rules right here so what we can do is create rule statements so for example uh, test one if a sensitivity score or if say a compliance so if a compliance in the body of the email of pci is detected so anything with a credit card number in what we're going to do is one of the following actions whether that be encrypt content require multi-factor authentication block that email apply the postmark say cc or bcc an admin uh, or we can also quarantine the email so there's many different actions that we can do uh, one of the other things that this lends itself to is data loss prevention. So from that reporting tool that I showed before, uh, there we can start to create some sort of patterns around our users. So who's frequently sending out very sensitive content or say sensitivity content of a level five that might, that potentially should not be. Uh, so we work with some of our partners in order to ingest that data or that big data and then come up with real time alerts around that. Uh, so let's see what that email looked like that we sent before. So if we remember when we sent that out, we did not click on the Trustify application. We did not require authentication, anything like that. But when we open this up, we see now this email has been encrypted, even though we didn't click on that. So as an admin of a large organization or a large law firm, what we can do is rather than training all our new users or all of our users on what needs to be encrypted, what doesn't need to be encrypted, what the latest compliance laws are either set forth by the ABA or HIPAA or PCI, whoever it may be, 
uh, that's all going to be set forth by our admin. So because I put a credit card number in here, I might not necessarily know that I'm breaking any rules or that I've just violated PCI guidelines, uh, but we're going to take care of that for you and automatically encrypt it. So when I click on decrypt and open, um, this one I don't have it set at multi-factor authentication, but it was sent encrypted, and now I'll be able to view that number right here. Harry, did that answer the question that you were looking for? Yes, I just wanted to show, in, in case there were any of our, our firms that had their administrators on here, to show them some of the additional power that the system has to offer. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Harry. Zach, I do have a few more uh, questions that just came in. How difficult is it to switch from one account to another, say from an attorney account to a secretary account? You have to log out and back in each time. Uh, so if we were in, say, Microsoft Outlook, for example, uh, what we would do here is open up our Trustify application. And then in the lower right-hand side of the screen, all we'd simply do is click log out, and then we would type in our username and password of our other account. And then we can log back in. Also, one of the other things to mention, on the bottom here, uh, we do have... Uh, a support ticket. So in the event that you do have any questions while working with the system, what you can do is send one in right from here and send that directly to our uh, support team who will answer you. Uh, I believe it's within an hour is what our SLA is. But what we do is type in what sort of um, what sort of machine we're working on, uh, what the issue is, and then send that in. So we'll send one in to support just to see. Uh, but you can do all that directly from the application. Also, if you wanted to go to the Trustify website to log into your web app, you can do that directly from the application as well. Is um, auto encryption only for people with more than 25 users? It is for 25 users and more. The reason for that is there is uh, some implementation that has to be done on the back end for Trustify. So what we're doing is we're making a DNS change. So what that means is we're redirecting outbound traffic from your servers to the Trustify encrypted server. So rather than with the plugin where we're doing that uh, at a selected basis one by one, with that application what we're doing is we're sending every single piece of traffic through Trustify to Scrub and then sending it to the public internet. So there is some implementation that goes through that. In the event that you do have uh, an organization that has, say, close to 25 users, say 20 users, and we need to look at some ICB cases, uh, we are open to that. That's something that uh, Harry and I will look at together. Okay. All right. Um, Aaron, were there any poll questions, or do we want to skip those for now? There are two poll questions if you wanted to quickly run through them. Sure. So the first question is, have you used email encryption in the past? Let me launch that. And if everyone could quickly vote on that. We're collecting the responses, and I can show them in just a second. All right. Okay, I'll give it just another second or so, and I'll close the poll. Boy, it was going back and forth here, but um, share the results. There we go. 50-50. All right, so that, that actually makes a lot of sense. So we recently came back from the American Bar Association technology show uh, that happened a couple months ago. And what we saw there in the conversation that we had is that, uh, well, we actually went to the show the last two years. So what we saw last year was that it was probably closer to 25, 75, uh, not using encryption, 75% uh, not using encryption. But since uh, towards the end of last year, the American Bar Association came out with a new ethics ruling uh, really requiring or stating that attorneys, when dealing with client information, should be protecting that, whether that be data at rest on their own servers uh, or data in motion, so via email. Uh, so since that's come up, we've seen IT managers in law firms starting to adopt new encrypted technology uh, features, and Trustify has definitely been one of those features. So um, definitely happy to see that that number is going up. Uh, that's also been greatly helped by Harry with Iowa, as well as the other bar memberships that we've been working with. Uh, but as a community, I believe it's something that uh, we really do need to focus on because hackers are getting uh, more and more technologically advanced. Uh, and they're not no longer just going after those Fortune 500 publicly traded companies. Uh, they're starting to go after the, the mom and pop shops, the little guys, uh, SMB businesses. So uh, definitely something to focus on in the next couple of years. And the next and final poll question, 
What is your primary email service provider? And I'll give everyone just a few seconds to answer. All right, I'll close that up, looks pretty good. And I'll share the results. Um, with that, Zach, was there anything else you had to show or? No, I, I believe that that's everything. Uh, we've been recording the webinar, so we'll be passing that out at a later date. Uh, we definitely encourage everyone to sign up through the Iowa Bar website. And if there's any questions, definitely feel free to reach out to myself, to Harry, uh, support at trustifycorp.com. Uh, and we look forward to working with everyone in the near future. Once again, thank you all for attending and uh, feel free to contact myself here at the bar office or Hank Hansen, our new uh, membership engagement uh, coordinator, and uh, we'll be happy to help you out with any questions you may have on the service. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Harry. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.